Hello tech friends. Today we're looking at the concept of an interactive DVD game. Look at this one. This particular one is Most Haunted, presented by Yvette Fielding. What could be better? I mean, it's it's Halloween, right? I've had this kicking around for a while, but now seems to be the perfect time to, to try it out. I got this for one pound, one British pound, at a charity shop. And look, it's got single or multiplayer game on it. Interactive DVD game, the ultimate paranormal experience as seen on Living, which is a UK uh, TV channel. We got a bit of description about it on the back. Uh, it says that uh, right down here, a bit tiny, exempt from British film classification. Uh, so I guess it's probably not too terrifying. Um, it's described as the ultimate paranormal experience. Yes, that's right. If you're a medium or you want to be, um, get a DVD and uh, and watch it and test your skills. It says here, presented by Yvette Fielding and featuring psychic mediums, prepare yourself for a terrifying journey packed with lost souls, vengeful spirits and remarkable stories that date back hundreds of years. Join Yvette and the team in an epic journey through Britain's haunted hotspots. Interact with the psychic mediums in creepy castles, mysterious manners, and some of the spookiest houses across the land. Now, Most Haunted was a TV show. It can't possibly still be running, <laughs> I'm sure. And uh, essentially, Yvette and her team would go to a haunted house. They would basically turn all the flipping lights off and try and talk to uh, dead people. You know, light entertainment. Um, and Yvette had a bit of a reputation for being terrified um, the whole time. So let's get on and try it out. Of course, what we're going to need is a DVD drive. Luckily, I do have one in my computer, although I don't think I've used it for about three or four years. Um, so hopefully it, it still works. So this is not just going to be a quick look. We're actually going to play through one of the whole games on this thing. Okay. So let's give it a go. Now you might notice that I've got Power DVD here. Remember that Cyberlink Power DVD? Well, this has completely changed from the last time I used it. The thing to remember is Windows doesn't actually have a DVD player uh, software system in it at all anymore. You have to pay for it. If you can believe that, that's the price you pay for a free operating system, no doubt. But hey, Power DVD, the trial version, I've had to sign in with a Google account and also what the heck is going on? Right, let's restart. Let's enjoy this together. There we are, that's our first indication that something spooky is about to happen. Living. <laughs> the living dead, more like. Hmm, strange change in tone there. <laughs> and this is also a little unusual. Let's just go with it, guys. Um, usually those sections would be. Oh, and welcome sorry, Yvette. To the most haunted interactive quiz. Here she is, the woman herself. Uh, yep, yeah, like everyone looks terrified. I've worked with a lot of mediums in my time. <laughs> Through this game, I will decide whether you have what it takes to decipher the most subtle spirits and truly be a medium yourself. Okay. To be successful, you'll need to work through a range of tests based around most haunted footage and questions from the show, coupled with trivia relating to the world of ghosts and things that go bump in the night. Classic. I would wish you good luck, but luck has nothing to do with it. I'll meet mm. you on the other side. I, I would say that having played this through once already, luck has actually got quite, quite, quite a lot to do with it. <laughs> but hey, maybe that's my... Um, inability now I had to particularly use this in the software power DVD because I need access to the controls up down left and right and you can see this little icon doesn't appear in VLC so 
if I just skip up and down? Let's find out how we actually play. At the beginning of the game, you'll be asked to select a house, which you will then work through. If you're playing in two-player mode, you will each select a different house. Your aim is to be the contestant who detects what happened, when and to whom in the house. This will be tested in the final section of the game, where I will interview you to see if you have truly understood what took place. To do this, you will need to work through the five rooms, encountering different challenges in each room. Each room is represented by a symbol, so keep an eye out for that, because that will tell you which member of the seance group is giving you information about that specific room. It's a lot to take in. You will need to do as well as possible in each individual room, as your round score determines the quality of the information given to you in the final passage of the game, the seance. You will need to listen carefully and decipher the information, cross-checking with any other clues along the way. Your deductions will arm you with the knowledge to go into the final interview with me. I will question you on what you have learned during the seance. Whether you can answer my questions correctly determines if you have truly unraveled the mysteries of the house. Well, Good luck. thanks Yvette. Okay, so did you notice the little green aura around her? Is it green screen or perhaps a spirit from another world? Okay, let's play. Start game. We're just going to stick with just the one, just the one, uh, one ticket, please. Um, okay, right. Where should we go? Northeast, central, south, west. I say we go to the west uh, by pressing left. Uh, keep just keep pressing left. Here we go. West. Uh, right. Shall we go to Stubbly Manor, Lockton Place, Knightsbridge Castle, or Jamesburg Mews? Jamesburg Muse, I think. Uh, okay, let's go. Mm, terrifying. Welcome to Jamesburg Muse. Thank you. Oh, that was short. Okay. Um, so this is this comes up to this is like a placeholder before you read it. Like, okay, you got to get into the mindset. So maybe that's what this is for. Um, but I think maybe it's a placeholder if you play the two-player game, perhaps to sort of say, you know, player one ready. Let's go. I hope you're liking this so far. I know I am. Okay, room one, appearances. So it's really just going to show us clips from the show and ask us questions about them. Not too difficult. Let's go. We'll now show you two clips of footage taken from Most Haunted episodes, and you have to answer a question relating to it. So keep your eyes peeled and your ears open. Mm -hmm. Get ready for your first clip. I feel like some of these clips could have been merged. In Ooh. bedroom one, guests awake in the middle of the night to see a disembodied arm pointing to the wall behind them. Oh, Five yeah. minutes later, a bald-headed man walks slowly past the bed and disappears. Uh -huh. In bedroom number two, the toilet flushes in the middle of the night ah. and there's no one there. <gasps> what? Here in room four, loud, unexplained banging noises can be heard echoing in the dead of night. There's some of them there. Doors slam in room 11, and here in room 12, many people have heard deep sighs and very loud footsteps. <laughs> okay, right. In which bedroom does the toilet f flush itself? It's bedroom two. Correct. Okay, just to say, you may be dazzled and amazed. Now for your second clip. Oh, thanks, Yvette. Um... You, you may be dazzled and amazed by my performance here, but I haven't done Locally this particular one. Locally known as one. the Grubber, the workhouse officially opened on a bleak Christmas day in 1841. Mm -hmm. Within a year, there was a riot outside its gates, yeah. as more than 20,000 people protested the lack of jobs caused by a slump in the manufacturing industries. With no work and times desperate, where detail. else to turn to stave off terrible privation but the workhouse? Privation? Um, okay, what is the workhouse locally known as? I think it was the Grubber. Hey, smashing it. Now, people might know Yvette Fielding from her time on Blue Peter. Um, I don't know if she considered well, this... Well, see if you can stay at this level until the end. I'm impressed. Ooh, well, Yvette. Um, I don't know if she saw this as a step up. Uh, in her career, or a step down. 
Okay, Me room two, medium, are you ready? I'm ready, let's go. In this round, you'll be asked to select the difference between two almost identical pictures. Spot the difference, Scroll I can do that. across the image on the right and select the area you think contains the difference. You'll have two sets of differences to spot, but remember, spirits can move. Uh, uh, Here's okay. your first picture. Now I did struggle. I did struggle with this when I uh, when I tried to do it before. Um, so if I can't spot it, then uh, and while you scream at the screen, um, oh look, I think oh no, actually I can't tell. Now um, just to just to explain a bit. Obviously, you get a DVD. They often have menus on them. You would just play play it and off you go. But this I feel like is a bit of an exploit of how the menu system works. And also it is kind of remembering my score. I don't quite know to what degree, um, but. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's it's quite impressive that it can do this sort of manoeuvre, I guess. Um, right, okay, anyway, we need to spot the difference. What? One of these things is not the same, but I can't really see what it is. So I'm just going to pick one. Um, I'm sure you spotted it at home. I mean, that's an alarming room there that's just totally green. I, <laughs> I, don't, think, um, I don't think I'd like to go in there. Okay, I've selected... Oh, no, that wasn't it. Oh, chilling. Okay, Your get used to that noise. Images are here. here they come. Oh, Yvette's just um, having a chat there to, to someone. Um, okay, right. What's different in these two pictures? Um, can you spot it? Uh, it's... Uh, this... Oh, sometimes it's windows. It's to do with windows and things. That, that was one of them um, previously. Oh, let's just go with this. Yvette, your head's different. Sorry. Incorrect. I don't really think there's a time limit on this. I'm, I'm applying an artificial one for your benefit. You've really missed what the spirits are telling you. Oh, she didn't like that. She did not like that. And that's gonna, that's gonna cost me in the later rounds. I think. Okay, room three, chilling challenges. Welcome to our multiple choice round. Okay. Here you'll be asked a range of questions about anything to do with the paranormal. Stay focused and select the answers you think are correct. I would say this is not what I would choose as a specialist subject on Mastermind. Uh, what was the devilish name that notorious occultist Alastair Crowley gave himself? Oh, I don't know. Child of Satan? That's, I think that's what his mother called him. Oh, no, that's incorrect. Uh, as I say, you're going to hear that quite a bit more. The Conqueror Worm was the American title of which Vincent Price film? Oh, Vincent Price, he's a bit of a legend, isn't he? Is it Witchfinder General? Let, let's try that one. Oh, hey. Uh, name the actress who wore the iconic white swimsuit in The Creature from the Black Lagoon. I don't know who that is. Maybe it was Mary Windsor. It was not. Uh, what book did occultist Alistair Crowley, he's back again, write in a state of trance in April 1904? He was probably on some drugs. Um, do what thou wilt, that sounds good. Is it that one? No. These are toughies. We do, uh, you can see the time sort of scrolling along the bottom. I wonder if it will run out, if I just let it run out. Uh, which Vincent Price film features a brief sequence in colour in which an arm appears from a bath of blood? Was it Hudson Haunted Hill, The Mad Magician, or The Tingler? I've seen The Tingler. Oh, I ran out of time. Not good. Don't run out of time. You've got it. I mean, there was a lot of words in the question. Uh, what was the Beast of Hollow Mountain? Uh, Sas Sasquatch. No. So this third round has not gone particularly well. Um, but it doesn't sort of, you know, it's not game over. You're just going to be left with less clues at the end. Uh, what was the name of the entity the occult is Alistair Crowley allegedly evoked by a magical portal in 1918? Uh, um, lamb? Oh! This Alistair Crowley is getting a lot of attention. 
Twice Told Tales is based on three stories by which American author? Edgar Allan Poe, Herman Melville, or Nathaniel, Nathaniel Hawthorne? Let's go with Edgar. It's not Edgar. Of course, he doesn't tell you what the right answer is. So uh, you can play again without knowing. Uh, name the 1953 3D film that features a Scottish castle and a 300-year-old giant frog. Is it the mist? Is it the mist? No. I imagine you horror fans and weird old tech fans are screaming in horror at what you're seeing. Alistair Crowley back again. Occultist and practitioner of magic owned a Bolskine house on Loch Ness. Which rock star bought it? That feels like something that Jimmy Page did. And he did. Nice one, Jimmy. Uh, which Vincent Price film only starred, oh, also starred Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, and John Carradine? Carradine? Um, I think it's House of the Long Shadows. Uh, horror films are not my forte. Um, gosh, if it's not Vincent Price, it's Alistair. Uh, oh, right, okay. Uh, Can Candyman. Oh, I don't know. I can picture the fellow, but I don't know the name of name of him. Let's go for Toby Todd. No. Nap, 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 nap. nap. Well, I mean, complete. Depends on your definition of that word, I well think. Well done. You presented a good understanding of otherworldly activity. I, I think that means I kind of got half of them. Half of them right. Okay. Audible apparitions time. Room four. Let's do it. Uh, yes. You will now hear two pieces of audio taken from most haunted shows. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is answer a question about each of them. Well, listen the up. question could be about anything, so listen carefully and tune your mind in. Okay. Just, uh... Get ready oh. for your first clip. Okay. Is that the first so clip? I think no. that William refers to the name of the yeah. spirit you're picking upon. Yeah. Okay. But that's that's not the bad feeling. This is just me tuning in and being able to pick up oh, okay. Right, okay. different... I mean, because as I say, there's lots of different levels here. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with a house that has got many images that are stored in it. Um, as I say, there's images of people being helped, nurses. Does, does the William name, as you've talked about, um, I feel he connects wall. to the house. Uh, okay, well, there, was only, there wasn't much in that one. Uh, which of these profession, uh, professionals does the medium mention? It was nurses, I think. Oh, no, but I picked the wrong one. Oh, that's... That is going to cost me. Now for your second clip. Hmm. She, hmm. Most Haunted's crew find themselves amidst the huge surroundings of Bambra Castle. But on a 900-year-old site that has well and truly stood the test of time, we knew more evidence could be attainable if we were willing to cover as much ground as possible. So we split into three groups, with Stuart choosing to investigate the scullery, Carl also heads off alone towards the armory, which left Kath and both Johns to join Gordon and I in the Bones Room. <laughs> both Johns. Um, went off to investigate rooms alone. I think it was Carl and Stuart. It's funny there's no music on this bit. Okay, hit the button. That that doesn't bear any relation to the um, to the house that we've been in. I think those initial clips are of the place that they went to, right? Oh. Good work there. You're certainly <laughs> sensing something. Yeah, I'm sensing a bit that you um, didn't realise we'd started to film that little section there. Um, okay, right. Harrowing histories. Not my favourite kind of histories. I prefer horrible histories. In we go, room five. Part of being a successful medium requires the ability to work out what is going to happen in the future. In this round, you'll see two clips taken from one of our episodes, which will stop halfway through. You will then have to tell us what happened next. Okay, what happened next bit? Let's see these clips. Get ready for your first clip. Ready? I've just got tightening in my chest, really, in my throat. Uh, okay, <laughs> what happened? There wasn't much to go on there, was there? Okay, David Wells faints, don't know who he is. An unknown object flies between David Wells and Yvette. The floorboards begin to shake and come loose. I think the middle one, you've got to think of what what would have actually been possible. Um, it was correct. Let's watch it play out, please. Can we? I've just got a tightening in my chest, really, in my throat. <laughs> 
Oh. <laughs> did it, Yvette. Did it. Oh. Okay. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, <laughs> is Yvette really being completely truthful about what's going now on? For your oh, she's back. Clip. Sorry, Yvette, I didn't mean to doubt you. Let's go. He's just a child, really. He's about... I don't know if he's even B16. Okay, and uh, hit to the head, you're saying? Um, okay, right. Can you tell what happens next? A spirit being uh, uh, pushes David Wells down uh, the bank and then throws a stone. Torture vet holds and starts to flicker on and off. Oh, it'll be that one. It it very quickly starts to rain. I mean, I don't think even the producer... The oh, whoa! Well, I couldn't nail that. Here's me being incredibly cynical. Let's... Hit to the head, you're saying. Is it an accident? Let's just enjoy oh, it. Oh, 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 David! Something, something just shoved me. What? It's like someone, I know I'm on a slope, but so it's like something was pushing me, pushing my oh. leg. You all right? Yeah, no, mm. I'm all right. I'm all right. Oh, God. Oh, something oh. just threw, something just, something just landed by my feet. So it's like a, it was like a me. dull fud, you know, like in the, in the grass. <laughs> yep. I did hear something. Yep. There we go. Okay. Make of that what you will. Right, room five complete. On we go to the... Oh. Reasonably done. I believe your powers are stronger than you proved there. Thank you. You'll head into the seance with a reasonable chance. Yeah. It will not be easy, so don't get complacent. But nevertheless, well done. Thanks, Yvette. Okay, um, right, so the way this section works is based on everything that we've done on the previous uh, the previous sections, we will get... To oh, actually, enter to be honest, I think seance. she's going to explain it. You'll be faced with five characters, all of whom you must select to contact the spirit on your behalf. They each represent one of the five games you've just played, identifiable by the symbol in front of them. Depending on how well you've done during the game affects whether you will receive a perfect tip, a reasonable tip, or no tip from each of the characters. Mm, I think we'll have when some you no receive tips. a reasonable tip, it is for you to decide whether it is accurate and whether it conflicts with any of the perfect tips you may receive. Okay. Keep your senses alert. I'll be waiting for you. So, the idea is, if you remember how well you did, you know which ones to trust, right? Um, I mean, I haven't kept a note. Let's find out what happens. Here they are. These people are at the seance. Uh, select the seance member individually to hear what they are sensing. Uh... I'd say the spirit I can sense is definitely over 40. I can't tell what kind of hair this person has. Okay, so the person's over 40. This now becomes a bit more like Cluedo. This is really where the, where the thinking has to happen. But I think that's the first one. Um, so uh, let's move on to the next one. I can only see one person in this room. It's not possible to see the person's hair as they're wearing a hat. Mm, the hair is an issue. <laughs> I hope there aren't any questions about the hair in the interview. Oh, I pressed the wrong button there. Okay, here we go. I'd say the person I can see is a little under five feet tall. Ooh. I'm also sensing that this person died during a war. Ooh. I'm sensing the Second World War. So she's picking up the Second World War. Okay. I'm sensing that the person I can feel is trying to tell me something. I can see the spirit is holding a tray of food. Oh. Mm, but can we trust that or not? And then this final person here who's really looking right up at the ceiling. The spirit that moves in this place has just walked past me and I noticed that they are wearing a big hat. I'm quite sure there is only one soul in this place. Okay, right. I think we've got as much information as we're going to get. Uh, if we press down, go to proceed. I mean, the main takeaways I think are they're wearing a hat. Okay, on we go. Welcome to the final and most important section of the game. You will have done well to make it this far. I will okay. now test how well you've understood the spirits based on the information you gained in the seance. Yeah. I will ask you five questions and from that I'll deduce whether you are a true medium or not. Only if you get all five answers correct will you have won and I'll give you the full story of what took place here. This will be interesting. Okay, Yvette. I'm not sure I want to live in a world where she gets to interview me. Okay, are we ready? Yes, let's go. Let us begin with you telling me which of the following is correct. Mm -hmm. You can see a woman. 
A woman? You can see a man. I think it was a man. It's a grandmother. It's a grandfather. Um, I'm just going to say it's a man. I don't hold... No, it was not a man. Very simply, I'd like you to tell me the age of the person before okay. you. Okay, was it over 50, I think? 25? No. 37? 37, no, no, no. no. 41? Mm, no. Or 52? 52, sure. Sure as eggs are eggs. Let's do it. 52, 52, 52, all the way. 52, certain, certain, final answer. That's one in the bank. Judging by their attire, what would you say this person's job was? Mm -hmm. A gardener? A chimney sweep? A cook? Or a chauffeur? Well, we had the... Uh, now we know it's not a man. <laughs> Although it could have been a, a grandfather, I suppose. We had a tray of food. Let's go for a cook. I guess that tip turned out to be accurate. Which of the following do you believe to be correct about the ghost in front of you? She's happy where she is. Happy? She has a message for you. A message? She isn't able to talk. Can't talk. She's right-handed. Hmm. I don't think we picked up on any of that. Should we say she's happy where she is? Aren't we all, eh? No, apparently not. She is absolutely... Uh, she's not happy. She's not happy. Which of the me. following can you see in the person's hand? A pair of scissors? No scissors. A mobile phone? Not a mobile phone. A knife? Uh, okay, Yvette a chilling. A tray of food? Tray of food, tray of food. Yvette, when she said knife, I felt like she was looking right at me. Tray of food, here we go. Okay, we really don't have any more clues to uh, go on now, so let's just hope it's another question about a tray of food. There's something there, definitely. You yes. certainly picked up some of the spirits. But Thank you. You need to focus your mind. I do. Keep working. What, what does that mean? Is that the end? Oh, medium failed. Ah, oh, that is uh, uh, just very disappointing. And then we get the roll of the credits. So how about that for a an exciting uh, adventure? You can go back to the menu. Should we go back to the title menu here? Um, let's, let's just pop down to the extras. I'll just show you those, but I, I won't play any of them. So you can find out how Most Haunted was created. Where was the most frightening, most haunted location? Where else do you think Most Haunted can investigate? What makes a good medium? Actually, let's check that one out. We should probably find out what makes a good medium. Otherwise, we're not going to do any better, are we, next time? When I talk to mediums about what they think makes a good sensitive person, mm -hmm. um, they normally say everybody has oh. the mm. chance or has the ability to be a medium, a psychic. For me, all the mediums that I've worked with, I'd say a good medium is a sensitive person, a creative soul, somebody mm. who's mm. selfless, somebody selfless, who creative. doesn't want fame, doesn't want they money. They don't want fame. They don't They're want money. They're doing this work because of the love for it and because right. they genuinely want to help people, living people, and also trapped souls. Because if we are mm. to believe that there are spirits out there, many mm. of them are trapped and many of them do need help. So for me, that's the sort of person that I want to work with, that I like working with. And I think we have that with our medium, David Wells. He's a lovely person. He's very spiritual, very quiet, very truthful, and very, very trustworthy. So D David Wells described as the medium there. Um, and he's not, the, he's not the most famous one from the TV show. I think that was um, Derek Acora. Uh, he, was a, a, he was kind of... A, more of a sort of celebrity name that I associate with uh, Most Haunted, but maybe they moved on by that point. Um, you know, oh, moved on. That's probably not the right terminology to use when we're talking about seances and things like that, is it? Um, well, there we go. What do you think about that? <laughs> that was a good bit of fun, wasn't it? DVD, interactive DVD games, a weird uh, time in history. Um, I'll, if I can find any more, I'll, uh, I'll share them with you. They're pretty rare. Um, and that, I think was an excellent example. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.